I'm gonna just say. Can you try the microphone just just to try? Hello, hello, <clears throat> hello. Look, can you hear me? Is it okay? Um, yeah, I'm waiting for his feedback. Sound. Are we good? It's going off my points. My iPhone. Can I help? The art directing thing and take yeah. these off. Yes, sure. <laughs> Thank you. You have to get permission for advertising, is it? Oh, what? No, I just didn't like it. It looks cleaner. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. So if you see me swigging from this bottle, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I prepared a few points that I was going to this kind of uh, catch on, assuming that there were going to be Africans in this audience. They yeah. are. Where are they? <laughs> it, uh, only Adriano, I see. <laughs> okay. You, honey, is here. Okay, you are. Okay, well, I was hoping that. And Michael are in the. Okay, uh, I was hoping that we would have. We were hoping to have invited a few Venetian Africans. But then, um, anyway. It's very standard for these kind of to thank everyone and blah blah blah, all, all that kind of thing. So, but I want to give really, what we do in, in Akan, the way I'm from in Ghana, nothing is said in a straight line, it's a whole series of narratives and parables, and people have to interpret it, you know. So, it's much more um, nuanced than thank you. ECC, blah, 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 thank you, Nana, thank all that is just, you know, and we, and we all know that most of these thank yous don't mean anything anyway. People don't mean it. So I'm just going to say things I really mean, which, which really, I think, captures the zeitgeist of what I do and so forth. So I would, this will be a bit tricky, definitely. Um, I'd like to capture why I'm here in a song by the Nigerian hip hop artist Davido and Humble Smith, Osinachi. <laughs> This okay, this is the, the talking before the song, so hopefully bear with me and Stop 
for you. What if your advice to people when they say won't go to bad by fire by the horse? My uncle father, Sinachi. My loving daughter, Sinachi. No. My baby mama, Sinachi. Tell him I'm do, Sinachi. No. No be my first to go to buy. I've been awaiting cast the fight. In I just did my own, they love me. Because the God is my side. They want to take away my favor. They want to spoil my career. And then they say I get the flavor. Do you see that in my Great. This is this is one of my favorite songs of the last couple of years. I've been unwell for the last two years with a stroke. But when I was in the hospital in America, this song always kept me up. I played it over and over again until I'm here in Venice. So thanks to this song and the doctors in America who charged me all that money <laughs> to, be, to, to keep me alive, but I'm here. You know, it's great to these events, the Biennale and all the, but the issues, big issues of our times that we have to address in these. And I was hoping to have more Africans here because I'm going to talk about my Africanness and the importance of the issues like immigration that, you know, we, most people in, in Europe don't want to address the kind of uncomfortable subject, just like the civil rights issues for America. People, are, but I think you, you have to use creativity to address them. Many years ago, I had this idea of creating a, a space in Helsinki where I live now with my family. I have a, an African son living in, in Helsinki and it was called the Tapestry of Culture, which is basically a neutral space in Finland where different immigrants could get to know one another. So I had that idea to do it here for Biennale and a good friend of mine, Italian, said, Joe, you know, Italians sometimes are very racist and they will marginalize your, your pavilion if that's your theme. I, and I thought, okay, I'm not going to, it, it saddened me that we have to always compromise as black people because someone else doesn't, is feeling uncomfortable. But these are real issues that I think we need to deal with. And I hope this finale, but the theme is time, space, and existence. How do we live together, isn't it? But I don't think we are really addressing it. I think we are skirting around the issue. Everybody is being so politically correct. Every time I walk on the streets of Venice or anywhere in Europe, I greet every single black person I see. I know the journey they have been through. A lot have come across oceans and boats and it's traumatic and to be just hearing a calming another calming African voice really suits them. And my my second son, who's not here, when he was younger, would say to me, Daddy, do you know them? I said, I yeah, of course I know them in my soul. So we'll be somewhere in London or New York or Washington and I'll say hello to a black person and he'll say, Daddy, do you know them? I said, yes. Yeah. I mean I, I just said yes because yes I know exactly what the African condition is, you know? So I'm just, I'm not, not to be overly political, but we are in interesting times in the world. You know, what's happening, what happened in the United States over the last, um, I think I'm going off script, but that's fine. I'm going off script a little bit, but the theme is still the same. You know, I am your classic African immigrant. I've just been lucky that I had friends who could fly me in a jet in an Airbus to London to, to study architecture. You know, I didn't have to go on a boat between Libya and, um, and the tip of Italy or Spain. But it doesn't mean that I have to wait I'm not the same. I'll tell, I'll tell two quick stories. I was recently involved with um, an African exhibition of of architecture and art at the Louisiana Museum in Denmark. And I got there a bit early, so I was in the cafe and there was a lovely African young man cleaning up the, in the uh, cafe. And so we got talking, he was from South Africa or somewhere like that. He said he was a PhD student in anthropology. I said, oh, great. 
and there's a, a tall, handsome European man walks in, Professor something, who's an anthropologist, they're waiting for this young this a professor to show up to come and advise on the exhibition. And I was thinking in my head, here you have this African sweeping your, your cafe who has the same degree as the European man, but yet you have to go and import somebody else who looks, who fits that role better than the guy who's sweeping your uh, cafeteria. So I told them, and they invited him in to participate in these meetings now. It just gave me such, you know, but this is what, it, this is the real situation in the world. And most immigrants are economic refugees. There's nothing else other than they have to. The second song actually captures this very well. There's a Ghanaian hip hop artist who did a song called Behind These Scenes. And the basic theme is, Africans come to, to, to Europe or wherever to work very hard and send money back home. And then on the flip side, if people back home think they, they're making so much money and don't want to help, but they can't do everything. You know, so we have um, Kofi Kanata, who's from Takra in Ghana. I mean, it's a shame that we don't have the videos of these things. I hope you guys will ask me for the link. I'm doing what architects have failed to, to do, which is the, you know, capture the, capture the, the, the you know, the, 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 the chronicles of our times, you know? Architects are so caught up in edifice making and we've lost that ability to engage with people. So that's why I'm highly inspired by hip hop and young people like this. And this great gentleman actually did one of my favorite videos at the Jamestown Air Cafe. He used the whole entire building for his video called Adam and Eve. So can we have some music please from Kofi Kanata, please? This is not the, this is not the right song, but it's okay. Anybody where you want to fight you, and I come there already know, I'll be right beside you, like the wall of Jericho, they don't know, they don't know, they don't know what's going on, when I kiss you, when I kiss you, when I kiss you, my baby boy. Yeah, don't be you, pull it, I'll be around. And if I ever need 
important what you're saying. It's just important that your microphone would be close to your mouth. Otherwise, we can't thank hear you. you. Thank you for telling me. Thank you. Thank you so much. The microphone. Yeah. So I have to keep the microphone close to my mouth. Thank you. And um, so this was the wrong song for my point. But because you guys don't understand the lyrics anyway, it doesn't make a difference. <laughs> it's the beat, you know. I'm almost done. Because we are out of a bit of out of sequence with the music anyway, so. Now I want to address quickly the young architects who build this wonderful pavilion. You know, people don't know the journey we've been through, thanks to Bushra and Nana, starting from. Nana visiting my cafe in Accra many years ago and just calmly, glibly saying, Oh, we will do something together. And then I got ill and Nana made it happen. Took the students there and the projects are in the pavilion. But to the students, all I'll say is that this journey of architecture is a long one. School. In the uh, world. So take what you've learned, but don't be transfixed by it and paralyzed by it. Use that as a springboard for knowledge gathering and sharing. The sharing part is the most important thing. I sat in London, like, every, like all of you here, most of the students here, and I left for New York City in 1986. I was very young. And I discovered my Africanness, not in Ghana or in London but in New York, in the States, because you know, in America, these issues are highly charged, at least, but it's on the table. You know, they've been talking about this issue since the beginning of the 19th century. So I arrived in um, New York City, and that year, 86, there was a TV documentary called Eyes on the Prize. Kept, you know, Victor, yes, Eyes on the Prize. And I learned a lot from about the slave trade, things that were not taught um, in Ghana. I learned a lot about Kwame Nkrumah, our first president, which was not taught to us in Ghana either. Nkrumah was the first Ghanaian president and the first president of an independent African nation, but he was overthrown in 66 by the CIA and, and their collaborators. So I grew up in Ghana where his, 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 his name was banished. You know, so I heard about Nkrumah in 1981 in America, because I read a book, Malcolm X by uh, Alex Haley, where Malcolm X was describing his first visit to Africa and meeting the great Kwame Nkrumah. And I said, wow, so I began buying books about my own leader, you know, 20 something years after I had left, I mean, I was born, I was in my 20s. We were not taught, we were not taught about slavery, we were not taught about the independence uh, uh, movements of, uh, of Africa, which you know, shaped a great portion of, of the world. So that's where the knowledge, so our inspiration may not come from Frank Lloyd Wright or, or Corbusier, but it's about your historical experiences. And that's why I am very pro HBC working with Professor Coleman um, Jordan from Morgan State University where we try to create links between the African schools of architecture and the black schools of architecture. We need to create these synergies, you know, which have been, they have, they have not been allowed to happen for, for a century now. And we need to decolonize the way we teach architecture, especially on the continent. And, and life work has been all about bringing people together rather than creating are the most important. So to you students, please be open-minded.
position and create the right alliance. Uh, mine have definitely a light line. I, I, and some of these um, relationships, because they could stand with humility, incredible things happen. I'm here at the Genali, I don't know why I'm here in the first place, but I'm, but I'm here. So somebody must have seen or heard something I said and did, and so I'm here. But I cannot assume that I'm here because I'm so great or whatever. There are issues that my being here will force all of us to, to um, address, hopefully. And Nana and Bushra have really taken this mantra of mine of collaboration to, you know, to its manifestation. Look at this thing behind us. Collaborating, you came to the cafe with your students, you did projects, and you're sharing these projects with um, fully. Please bring me the, the new book I just got, please. These collaborations are very important. I'd like to share, share a book, which I just got this morning, written by Jacob Pogali, who I met many years ago on another exercise like this. And today he's produced a book that most African schools of architecture need to, to look at, which is the Trump of Architecture of the 60s. And we talk about it a lot, but nobody has actually produced in recent times a book like this. And I'm looking at this book and looking at this book I grew up in. Yeah. So, wow, I'm for the person, somebody has taken the time to analyze them. And so, Jacobo can't be here, but we thank him. And I'm going to spread this book around every university on the continent, you know? So, thank you, uh, Dennis, for produce, helping produce this, this book. These are the kinds of collaborations I'm talking about. And one, two, one, two. And then, you can do those. Yeah. The one, one, two. There's so many people we have to thank, but I'll leave the thanking to the people who are dealing with them directly. So I'll, I'll introduce Flavia, who from the university also in Venice, who has been instrumental also in making this thing happen. And their they they collaboration is also going to be coming out of our relationship. Yes. Together. So please explain. It will be a pleasure uh, to work with the uh, student of
Um, and this event also marks the opening of the Fourth of Empire, the Compound House Psychology Exhibition. Um, that exhibition is an ongoing, it's the result of an ongoing project that uh, Studio Nyali leads. And Bushra and I founded Studio Nyali in 2019 um, on the basis of discussions about our own heritage, actually, and where we came from and the way we live, and how that perhaps wasn't seen in the, um, the way that we live in the UK, but also in our own architectural education. And recognizing those gaps was something that we thought was really important to capture through our research. And very much thanks to Kingston University, where we are all um, alumni, we've been able to teach this uh, project. So it's a really live project with lots of collaborators. We consider our students collaborators, and we're really excited to share the results with you. So if you are in Venice between now and November, do visit the pavilion. Um, our exhibition is up for the next few weeks if you are around, so please do see it. And yes, I'm going to hand over to Bushman. Yeah. I'll just do a quick thanks. So definitely thank you to One to One Collective for being here with us and helping us build it. Uh, to the students who have also volunteered their time for the last two weeks to help us put it together. Uh, AK2 engineers who helped us design it and um, ensure that it doesn't flow away. Uh, all of our donors that have uh, given money and sponsored us through um, the KU Dhaka. Uh, we really appreciate everything you've given. Uh, Aki Africa and Joe, as Nana said, um, and also the ETC. You've been really great. Thank you for having us, European Cultural Centre, uh, and thank you for all your help uh, making this happen. Lastly, I'd like to thank Michael and Kukua who are joining us today online on Zoom for the talk. Um, can't wait to get into the discussion with you. So perhaps we'll let them both introduce themselves now and then we'll get into the discussion. The first discussion is with Fisher and I in conversation with Michael and Kukwa talking about our research and the essence of the compound house, after which we'll be followed with a conversation with Michael and Jemima Morton Shane, who is an, um, a student of ours from 2.2, who's now actually graduated. Um, and then following that, there'll be a conversation between one to one collective and the students who participated in the building. And that will be on the basis of architectural construction and really the kind of learning lessons from making and being on site and getting that experience um, as a way of an architectural education. So thank you very much for being with us and hope you enjoy the series talk. And hopefully look around with the other cameras. <laughs> Um, Michael, are you there? I'm here. I'm here. Can you can you hear me? Yeah, we can. The wonders of technology. Um, yeah. So, uh, should should I introduce myself or? Uh, yes, please. Yes, go for it, Michael. Yeah. Okay. So I I'm Michael Badu. Uh, I taught with. Uh, Nana uh, and Bushra in 2019, the year when we were, we uh, met uh, Joado in Ghana, uh, run the uh, Studio 2.2, of which there are uh, some students there with you now. Um, I work at Kingston as a lecturer, I'm actually the module leader for tectonics, which is the making of architecture in the third year undergraduate course. Uh, and I also teach dissertation uh, at Kingston University. Um, yeah, before that, I've just been teaching, at, started teaching actually for the last, since 2018. Uh, before that, I, I was practicing architecture, uh, mainly designing mosques in my own practice, uh, but also working for other people doing mundane things like house extensions and uh, also uh, refurbishment to churches and stuff like that. Um, so uh, currently I'm doing a PhD on the relationship between uh, Adolf Loos uh, from Vienna, um, Le Corbusier, obviously Swiss architect, and Josephine Baker, the dancer, um, and how they all were in Paris uh, in the interwar period. Sure. Um, thanks again for having me here. Um, the pavilion looks uh, absolutely smashing. Uh, we got a little walkthrough and, and it was really beautiful. 
Um, so my name is Kukwa Manfo. Um, I run a project called the Accra Archive Project, which is building and is almost halfway through building a digital archive of Ghanaian architecture. Um, I'm currently also doing a PhD in London at SOAS um, in politics, but the politics of architecture, looking at West African nation building and citizenship and all the inclusions and exclusions through the study of the architecture of school buildings in the region. Great, we're really happy to have you both. So we'll start with uh, Kukwa from St. George Butcher and I. Um, it's a real pleasure to have you, Kukwa, because we were uh, uh, recently all mentioned in an article run by Bloomberg City about compound housing. And I thought it was really fantastic the way that you described the um, essence of living together and living in compound housing. And I thought that would be a really great place for us to start a discussion. So we leave, it, we leave ourselves to you. Um, yeah, I also, so I already knew a bit about your work. I think we couldn't cross paths properly in Ghana because then I was doing field work in the Volta region when you guys were in Accra, so we couldn't actually meet. So um, the interview for me was also the first time I, I, I heard about your work properly. Uh, and it was it was just great to see that we're kind of thinking in the same way. Um, one of the things that struck me that um, I, was, I, I was most happy about was how... Um, you were clear about not trying to recreate or just mimic these kind of old forms of housing. But again, like you said, using this essence with the essence of it and acknowledging what the modern needs are and the changes in tastes and the changes in culture, because culture is ever changing. Um, and kind of trying to bring back the essence of living together and being able to live together in the form of the compound house um, typology. I think, Fisher, you've always spoken really nicely about how it's about translation. So I wondered if you'd like to start there. Um, yes, I guess that, so, so obviously Nana mentioned that we were interested in the compound house because it is a typology we've experienced um, when we were younger, uh, me living in Kenya and Nana in Ghana, and um, something we never came across again once we left. So, um, especially in, from an architectural perspective. Um, and then when I tried to do some research on, on that type of house, very little came up, um, and more and more is coming up now. But, but it really felt like there was a, an area in architectural history, but in contemporary architecture that had a gap and needed filling in terms of what, what it means to live today as somebody with a multiple identity, multiple um, experiences. Um, and then, of course, we now both live in the UK um, and it, it, there has been multiple um, expressions of appropriation of different cultures. Uh, so it was very important to us that we don't reappropriate, but rather try to recuperate and rebuild what what we had experienced in the past. Um, but from the perspective that we have now, uh, as architects, but also as um, people who live in houses, as, as many others do, uh, to see how we could. Um, I think kind of touching on Joe's point, see how we could communicate with people as a whole. And so um, Studio 2.2 in its first year, which um, I actually wasn't completely involved in, uh, was taught with Mary, Mary Vaughan Johnson, Michael Badu, and Nana Bayama, um, and uh, that, that having Mary and Michael um, really understand that it was about culture and people rather just about architectural form uh, was, was where we started. That was our starting point. So, of course, we are architects and we care about architecture and, and form and um, formal language, but I think as a, as a root of it, we care about culture and how we capture that essence of, of the culture we, we know and have experienced. I wonder if you want to jump in here with any questions for us. Um, yeah, question or comment or provocation, maybe. Um, 
So I, 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 when each of you are talking earlier, um, you also mentioned this element of communicating. And I, I think, Bushra, you mentioned um, doing, um, doing some research at first to see what was out there about compound housing and how little there is. Um, and just wanted to add that there's also very um, little by people in the regions where this housing types are prevalent. And at first, when I also started looking into this, I, I, I felt that there was nothing um, but later now, um, there is a lot. It's just not privileged and elevated in, in the same ways as other forms of information and writing and, and research about this psychology. Um, so this, this is a thing I, I, I try to do as well in my archive, Accra Archive Project, because um, there's, there's more to architecture than European architects practicing in Africa is more than the 1950s, 60s modernism. That's a lot, but it starts with recognizing it as architecture. And it's, a, it's another thing I love about, I'm fangirling a lot, but it's, it's, it's another thing I love about the compound house project that you're doing. It's, uh, it's naming it, it's naming a typology and saying this is architecture. I think that's really true. And I think we also touch on a very important point about the lack of um, information, but also actually what's considered information. So a lot of the time, it's not that there's a void of information, it's what people can think value. So is it appeared in external? But actually, the way that Africans thought was more knowledge. So part of um, one of the things that Bishop and I read so actually, what can we do as a That's equally important how you shape what is then understood as architecture and how citation, so who cites it, also So, how is that history? And it's also important to our work. And I think that's also the reason why I don't know with us. Um, about that first of actually understanding the subject matter. I think I, I won't still Michael and Jemima's uh, show too much, so more will come from that. But that was really an important part of the lesson. And also not just from the way that other people in might but actually to understand how other people might be. So for instance, when we did that, um, I really enjoyed how you talked about um, the compound house uh, bosses and the kind of other that live in the town that make those things tell you and the way that they build social relationships and the way that they by not by recognizing the architecture vessel rather than the things that. Um, sorry, I missed the last part. I think the mic slipped. So if you could just repeat the last part. Oh, Chris, well, I was just talking about compound house uh, gossip. <laughs> and um, <laughs> compound housing. I think that's really been important for us to also understand that. that Actually, it's not just about the architectural form, but it's about the um, the ways that we build mm. um, practices, shape the ways that people live. Um, and yeah, I just I just thought of really that up in that in that article. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mentioned that and even how it, it translates into new media forms, um, such as in social media and um, and in, in Ghana, on Ghana Twitter, um, people, there's something called compound house Twitter, which um, people use to describe um, a certain kind of interaction and uh, sharing, over sharing and over exposing of, of things. And, and this is a thing that comes up with in my research about how people feel about these kinds and forms of housing, about this, um, like a lack of privacy, um, but also it seems like a trade-off between the lack of privacy and also having people to know when there's something up with you and when to, to reach out and when to give care. Um, so you have to kind of open up for people to know too much about you so they can know to help you when you need help. I 
that was really cool. Um, uh -huh. We're running really a, a lot of time, but just before we finish, I guess um, we have our exhibition for next week. We also are going to be working on a book, um, which Michael will be talking uh, on the house uh, about two years, but uh, we'll keep you posted. Um, and yeah, follow us, and we hope to uh, discuss more about the topic going forward and hope that. It picks up traction um, in, in the architectural sphere. So, uh, really looking forward to that in the future. We'll now pass on to, unless you have any closing comments, Super. No, that's good. <laughs> um, okay, we'll pass on to Michael. I'm uh, um, Autumn Thanks. So, Michael, I think that's the one, Autumn Thanks. So, um, thank you very much for the to the play. Hi. Hi, Jemima. How are you doing? I'm good. How are I'm you? I'm good. Not, not as good as you, though, clearly. <laughs> you guys are living yeah. it up. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you want to talk about? <laughs> well, okay. All right. I knew this was going to happen. So, <laughs> well, there's not, there's not, there's like an obvious question I could ask you. So, um, having been through this, this whole thing, right? So, obviously, uh, you did, you did your all three years at Kingston, and then second year was with Mary, uh, Nana, Bushra, and I, and then third year, you've completed, just completed your third year, and now you've just done this brilliant pavilion, which is really beautiful, and you've learned all this stuff. So. What's your feeling about the canon? I mean, some of the stuff you might have worked, learned in the first year, how do these things fit together in your mind now? What, what, what does this mean for you going forward as an architect now? What are you going to do with all this stuff? Um, I think the way to build cities in the future is to live collectively and share spaces um, and I think that's the best way to be not yeah. only materials but spaces that everyone can collect in and enjoy together. So, right, I think group efforts is always kind of the way to go as well. Um, yeah, like we shared water on site, we <laughs> have big bottles, not for COVID safe, that, but <laughs> we shared water together and it was all a bit more efficient um yeah well you know i think that's uh what's really good about that is that's maybe a lesson that um compound twitter or or uh, as kuyoko was talking about before uh, sort of compound gossip has given to the world about um yeah overshare over <laughs> over socialize you you've only got you've only got uh things to gain not lose right uh I, I think for the architect as well i mean josie i can see you're there as well and you're part of one to one collective um so i think the way that you guys work as well i mean you must have experienced that jemima the way that one to one a, a practice like one to one collective work together it's not like okay there's a couple of bosses and then there's assistants and then there's kind of people that you don't pay who do all the donkey work you know it's kind of this everyone's on the same level and everyone mucks in and uh you produce something wonderful that you can't maybe necessarily photograph you know there's something beyond the beyond what we usually see in the magazines that's that's of value do you think you're going to find that when you go to work? <laughs> yeah, it's been so inspiring working alongside One to One Collective because we've learned so much and they've been our mentors, our mentors like for the students and it's been so inspiring. Fantastic, um, fantastic. 
especially just social skills as well, how to talk to people yeah. in a polite way, especially in a stressful environment as well, keeping you cool, making sure there's not too much gossip. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I wish we could have filmed it like, uh, like Big Brother or something. That would have been cool. <laughs> well, Adriano, he's got a lot of clips. So really? Okay, I need, to, I need to talk to Adriano then. We need to see this. We need to see this process. <laughs> definitely been a fly on the wall for sure. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's the man himself. Hi, how are you? We're just talking about you. Oh, oh, thank you. So, <laughs> I, I hope you were talking badly because uh, how I've been very bad Hello. because I've been supporting you behind the scenes. Hello, it's how are Michael. You? Michael, nice to meet you. All right, nice to meet you, Adriana. People. This died, you know, like, in this country for Brazil. And uh, I will never forget their position of a collective, a loud work. Every person did, went out of his or her way, worked into the very. So this is very special. I hope to meet you too in Ghana. Yes, and I hope so. In Ghana. I hope so. Because that's the meaning of, you know, why do we do all this? We do it. This is a show case of, you know, a creative work in order to do more and build sustainably in Africa now. Yeah. It's very urgent. Otherwise, yeah. people thinking our character, they will come with the thank you all one to one collective uh, you know, uh, departure department of architecture and uh, landscape yama uh, how do you pronounce it? Yama, Yama, oh, 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 oh. and uh, yeah, Fusra yeah. for making it possible. And thank you for the ECC for giving us the opportunity to be here in this beautiful Venetian garden. Lucia Pedrana, uh, Suzanne van der Lord. That's well said. Thank you. It's frozen a little bit on my screen. Oh, it's back. Thank you, baby. Thank you, Adam. Thanks. It's my first. She's trying to. I'm back. Now, um, I think. Sorry. Do you want to pick up where you left off? No, no, no that that was uh, that was where we left. I mean, that was a good a good. Um, a good intervention because it, what it did, it made me think that um, Jemima was just saying about the collective, collective work, and how um, how inspiring that's been for her, and how that's kind of an extension of the kind of ethos of the compound house. You know that this this idea that you work collectively, and and how that's one to, that's what one to one do anyway, right? And uh, Adriana was kind of reiterating that, and it kind of made me think that um, in relation to what Joe was saying earlier about the kind of pressing problems of the world, um, that just this knowledge of how, which is not something you can necessarily write down, which again is like a very African thing, right? So you can't really write it down, you can't communicate it in a kind of conventional way, but there's this knowledge, embodied knowledge, about how to work with others that could be very useful, like it's vital really. You know, we've got all these problems to solve and there's all these type of, you know, kind of forums uh, to do with sustainability and Davos, and they never seem to solve anything because everyone's protecting their own interests, you know? 
there's, I think there's there's something in this ethos which goes beyond even building physical things, you know, which could be really, really useful. And there's still so much work to be done, even if uh, everybody on board is, you know, on the same page as all. And I think working in the UK, there's a lot to be done to kind of move on to one-to-one -one collectives, talk with the students um, about their ethos and about how they progress um, their practice. So I'm going to pass over to Madoka Ellis and we'll be joined by Pablo Boyrak uh, also, and all of our students, um, which who, who will introduce themselves individually. Um, okay, here's Madoka. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jemima. Thanks, Josie. Thanks, Bushra. <laughs> Should I bring the laptop? Yeah, then? just disconnect the, the battery, Which not this one. one. This one? No, not Is that one. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yeah, of course, come on, come on, Nana. Okay. Um, I'll go like this. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Oh my god, we have it signed here, yeah. Why should I
by name or organization <laughs> by organization because we'll just take the 20 minutes. Uh, but thank you, everyone that's been involved. You all know who you are. So uh, we're going to start a little conversation uh, about, I think, the education in architecture and in design in general, which is quite linked, and the real world. So how do we learn in uni? And how do we then go to practice or not? And we take our own path as all of us here in one to one have done. And I hope all of you take your own path and research uh, so that you can meet us and that you can see you. So we'll Okay, so there is computer problems. So we're gonna we're gonna pass. Oh, this one or this one? No, no this is. So it's a bit of a juggling between the mic and the computer. Uh, so we're gonna be passing the the computer around, but nevertheless, it's just so that you know all of us and that you know what our wonders are and you know what is that difficulty between studying and then making things and you know doing what we're taught to do. I'm going to pass the mic to Josie Brogan here on my left and then it will carry on going uh, and I think I'm just going to be the laptop carrier. <laughs> I'm sure you'll make a wonderful laptop carrier. Hi, so I'm also one of the alumni from Kingston University um, and part of One to One Collective and I think it's really important that we guys do work the collective i think is an important part in the one-to-one -one, uh because we do all see ourselves as helpers and sharers of ideas and skills uh, we all have different one collective uh, and i think having all of these different sets of strengths allows us to progress as one unit um and we try to creating our projects as well, this ethos of helping others with our unit. Um, and yeah, I think I'd be interested to see how going forward, the students thought that that was interpreted in our, our build as such. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Kit. I just finished second year at Kingston Uni. Uh, I found this experience was just very interesting, learning how the practicality of the project comes together towards the end and how things need to be continuously changed as we go along. Um, I thought working with a large group of people rather than your own as well was a very interesting experience, working out strengths and weaknesses and things like that. And also working with a kind of diverse range of people from different specialisms, um, just, yeah, kind of going into the strengths thing and it really helped. Hi, um, I'm Jeremy. Um, I'm a returning master's student at Kingston Uni. Uh, yeah, and I, I think the project has really shown that what we can achieve collaboratively. Um, and yeah, I think the outcome is fantastic. We've been very lucky uh, to have such a good group of people. Um, but yeah, it's also shown how difficult it is to work somewhere that you're not used to working. It's been a lot of challenges to overcome in Venice. Um, but yeah, I think it's been very good. Yeah. Hi, I'm um, Louis. I'm a third year product designer at Kingston School of Art. Um, yeah, enjoyed the amazing experience it is joining an architectural collective, studio, and project as a whole and really changing my perspective on the work that I've done previously uh, and joining in with almost an installation in real life, um, difference in that and making it on a small, much smaller scale during university. Um, yeah, I wanted to thank everyone, especially the one-to-one -one guys uh, for really helping us work through it all. Um, <laughs> Um, hi, I'm Joanna. Um, I just graduated um, from Kingston University. Um, so I think coming here, it was really a great opportunity for me to learn 
and also meet all amazing people. It was such a great opportunity to learn from all of you guys. I think I would say well done and thank you for <laughs> uh, hi everyone, my name's Ben, um, also a Kingston alumni of uh, five years um, and part of one-to-one -one collective. Um, oh, man. I just want to say that I think it's sort of imperative for um, these sort of trips to do builds in different parts of the world um, for architects to make that bridge between making and designing. Hey man, hey, what's up? Computer. You all right? Comparative that you sort of get your hands dirty. Oh, okay, well, you're nearly done, yeah. Things do go together. The, uh, the ups and downs that, oh. that come with it and the changes that happen on a daily yeah. basis. And, um, and right, yeah, cool, man. And yeah. That come much closer together. Um, yeah, is that okay? <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go and, I'll go. Yeah, I'm going to pass you over to... Uh, no, no, I mean, as long as it's all in there, I mean, what have you packed? I mean, it always seems... I think um, Ben's rightly captured the mood. It's been um, two weeks of very intense work, but very enjoyable work. And I just have to say a massive thank you again to One to One Collective and the incredible students we've been so privileged to work with. Um, you've heard from just over half of them and you'll hear from the other half of them, but... It's been a phenomenal experience um, that Busher and I are just blown away to be supported and collaborate with truly amazing people. And I've learned so much from all of these, uh, all of these people here now. Um, just small techniques, even on site, <laughs> how to put your weight properly <laughs> so you can do things quicker. It's been an absolute learning experience and it's been one of learning for both Fisher and I, even as designers. And I think what Pablo was saying earlier about that bridge and that gap between education on a computer and in the classroom or in university, and then getting out into the real world and building something. I think it's been building this together has been even more than Busher and I imagined because sharing that knowledge and being able to share our research, but also the knowledge of building together has been absolutely fantastic and I now pass you over to Jemima. Um, yeah this is what I want to do in the future <laughs> for sure. So all of my student all of my student colleagues we're gonna be working together in the future for sure. <laughs> yeah lots of love everyone <laughs> Um, I'm Evangeline, I'm in my master's um, at Kingston. I think for me it's been really good after having a year of being inside, like by yourself at the computer, to be able to come and socialise and learn at a one-to-one -one scale. Um, and I think even when you think things are going right and then they weren't as you thought, that was even better because you learned so much more from it. So yeah, it's been good. <laughs> Thank you, me again. Um, just really happy we we're able to provide this opportunity. Just really grateful for everyone being here and um, going through it with us with the ups and downs. As Ben mentioned, I think he, he really captured the essence. It's been emotional, <laughs> to say the least. Um, but uh, I think all I can say is gratitude and um, also to... Um, uh, use this opportunity to say that this exhibition and this pavilion is also a bit of a memorial to the late Mary Vaughan Johnson, who was all of our department um, head at Kingston University, who passed away sadly in, in March 2021. Um, so this is for, also for you, Mary, so thank you. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Madoka. I'm a part of One to One Collective, and I'm also a Kingston alumni. Uh, first of all, I want to like thank everyone here again because everyone has put their like blood and sweat 
went into this. Literally, Jemima saw her knees. <laughs> so, thank you. And also, another thing is like, thank you, Nana and Bosha, for the research you're doing into African architecture because it's something that is lost and it's something we don't get to understand as we study. So, thank you very much. And yeah, blessings to everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rosie. I'm a third year interior student. Um, I'm very lucky to be here. I think we all feel like that. Um, and I would really urge anyone in arts to get involved with many people in many different practices and learn from each other because it's been a really eye-opening experience. And yeah. That's it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Megan. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I um, just graduated doing interior architecture at Kingston and being able to do this straight after handing in has been the most incredible thing. I think everyone's spoken about how we've all been kind of locked up for the past year and a bit and finishing your third year and then being able to go straight out to a place like here with incredible people and being able to understand the processes of what me and many other people are trying to go into in the future has been incredible and yeah I'm very 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 grateful and it's been amazing. <laughs> hi, uh, hi I'm Freya I also just graduated from interior architecture at Kingston and I just want to also say how nice it's been to be able to work with all these beautiful gorgeous people and be so, as amazing as this it's also nice to learn so many things that you wouldn't learn in university, like seeing, even just seeing like how it comes from a computer 3D model to this in, what, two weeks. It's been incredible. <laughs> I mean, we worked hard for it, but it's been good. <laughs> yeah, so that's that. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Kat. Um, I'm a fourth year master student at Kingston. And I think this was a really good project that shows how much work goes into what we design. And like, this is a small project and there was a lot of work. So like, <laughs> well done. Cause like, you will remember behind every piece of plywood, there's like 15 pieces of structure. And <laughs> like really big thank you to one-to-one -one guys. Cause you taught us so much. And yeah. we really couldn't have done this without you. And thanks for teaching us how to use a drill. <laughs> <laughs> God, I did not realise how weird it is when you actually have the microphone. <laughs> okay, so I I agree with what Michael was saying, which is that um, that it's about not having a centre, and I think it feels weird having a microphone in your hands because suddenly you feel like the focus is on you. But I came in late. I came in three, two week, no, a week. <laughs> Like everyone else has been working on it for ages and I'm part of one-to-one -one, and I think being able to come in late and being able to slip in and find jobs to do and, and a role as a latecomer is what it's about when it comes to collective working. It's not I'm the main person and if someone else comes in it's going to make it really difficult. It's just it's that idea of of, of being a moving, adapting, evolving organism. And bridging back to what Pablo was saying, which is the theory and then the practice. The theory, I think, is the bit that helps on-site make decisions quickly. So it's not that connected often. You're suddenly like, that's such an abstract thought. Why was I worrying about the, the pink and the red or whatever? But, but it helps you if you have a good research and a good theory when you're on site and you're having to make compromises it's those bits that you've been thinking about for ages that make that whole process go that little bit quicker um so there is a massive link and and it's a lot about process too like you'll draw something and then you'll realize that you'll have to draw it again and again and then when you're on site you'll have to draw on it and then, <laughs> and then you'll chop it and then you'll realize it's still not right <laughs> So the process is really important. And um, the last bit is, yeah, that, that you, you do all put a lot in and everyone, I think we had one person being sick, someone else passing out, someone else getting on 
like the teamwork and having the the equal platform means that you can ask questions when you feel ill, you can fall back on the rest of the team and it adapts and moves on. Um, and I have nothing else. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, I hope that was a bit of a glimpse uh, on the whole team. And we'll leave you here. I hope you've enjoyed the pavilion. We are now enjoying it, right? We're going to have a drink now. Right here. I think we'll do a last Thank you so much all for joining us. Um, it's very live, it's very moving. Um, we're in the space, in the pavilion, and it's been an absolute pleasure um, to have everyone be able to join us online while we open um, the Aki Africa Pavilion, but also sharing our research. And part of this journey has been, it's been an extraordinary one. Firstly, from Joe's invitation to be, um, to be part of his invitation to the ECC's um, Time Space Resistance um, exhibition. Um, Bushra and I are really grateful for that, for the privilege of being able to design a space that um, gives us an opportunity to really think critically and think about our values as designers but then also develop something that was um, meaningful towards our research. So the space we're sitting in is, is inspired by our kind of compound house research, that kind of shared communal space. And I think as we're sitting in here using it now, you can see that essence of what it is like to be in a communal space, a space where you can gather and also collectively share ideas. And I think these past two weeks, plus five days quarantine, <laughs> have really been about that. It's been about that translation and sharing of ideas. And we've learned so much from all the people that have been involved. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure and a, a gift of a lifetime to be able to work with all these fantastic people sitting around me here and also people outside. Um, and we just want to say... A big thank you for joining us as we are exhibition um, the Afri uh, the compound house uh, the compound house um, exhibition uh, titled the course of empire compound house psychology will be up uh, in the Archi African pavilion in the Marinessa gardens for the next two weeks so if you are in Venice do check it out and longer and if you're not in Venice I hope you felt like you were in Venice today. <laughs> Given the uh, 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 Venetian vibe, just so <laughs> we're in good company. Um, yeah, we just want to say thank you so much for joining us. It's been a real pleasure and a real journey to be with you here in person, but also everyone joining us online. And I'll hand it over to Bushra to do a final thank yous for us. And yes, thank you. I think you said it all now, so um, thank you again, and I think you just slap it out, yeah? <laughs> Do you hear me? Yes, I hope so. Hi. Uh, so just, uh, I'm Suzanne, and this is Lucia right next to me. Uh, so on behalf of the ECC, we would like to thank all of you guys for this wonderful job you've done. Uh, it looks amazing and it's really beautiful, but it's a meaningful project. So we are really thankful and, and proud uh, to be able to host this project here in, uh, in our venue. So uh, um, if, uh, of course, anyone is in Venice, please come and see this. Um, and Part of our exhibition, which is Time, Space, and Existence. Uh, so there are two other venues to see. I don't know if you have visited them, them already, but Palazzo Mora and Palazzo Bimbo are uh, open to the public until uh, November. Uh, so, so yes, so thank you again for being here. Thank you for everyone joining us tonight. Uh, and uh, yes, let's uh, go and grab a drink together. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it. still on. Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> Whose PC is it? I'm, I think I'm still online. <laughs>
<laughs> if you want to close the recording has stopped.